Why the Fools Fall in Love, and you know, movies like that really inspired me. I really wanted to be, you know, like the characters in the movies. So I would uh, force my brothers and sisters to to learn the, the choreo and the music, and I, I I knew that I really really wanted it. Um, it was something that they were interested interested in, excuse me, but they weren't um, as as crazy about music as, as I was. And it just kind of went from there. I you know, fell in love with Whitney Houston, uh, started singing a lot of her songs and practicing Tony Braxton. And, and then, uh, yeah, I went to uh, Fast Forward, came down to Jersey, and uh, got my start. It's so crazy. I, I gotta tell you guys this story real fast, because it's so, it's so interesting. But 
I, I came down to Jersey. My parents um, ended up, you know, getting evicted from their apartment, and you know, we didn't really have anywhere to go, so we packed up, and um, you know, going toward my grandmother's house down in Florida. You know, we had to pass through uh, Jersey, and um, we uh, stopped at uh, stopped in Atlantic City, and yeah, we, we had never um, we had never been. To, away from each other. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I think it's the volume in the mic, but uh, we had never been um, to Atlantic City, and that's the place where we stopped. I walked in one of the uh, the hotels, the Tropicana. I don't know if you guys is, is it yes, still around? That's our hotel. Okay. Yeah, that's our hotel. Okay, but, so we um, we stopped at the Tropicana, went in, and there was um, a lounge called the Tiffany Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't think they still have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was called the Tiffany yeah. Lounge within the um, Tropicana, and a band was playing, and you know the the lead singer he was handing the mic to everybody in the in the audience, and he put the mic on me, Ooh, and I took okay. my chance, and, and I, <laughs> I sang my song, and I you know I, I got my start there. Like, it what was, was that song that you sang? I will always love you. I love that song. Yes. I really love that song. And it's a hard song to sing, too. So <laughs> yeah. um, I, I realize that a lot more now than I did then. But um, yeah, I got my start there from there, you know, Star Search to sign my, my, my record deal with uh, Sony Columbia and, and working on a project. Now, how did you go about auditioning for Star Search? You just found it and then you went? Um, well, you know, kind of much like, you know, me visiting visiting, stopping in Jersey, because it wasn't really, you know, supposed to be, uh, it was like a pit stop. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't really planned, but after I started singing in the lounge, we ended up staying there, and a lot of people would like, uh, you know, uh, raise money for us to stay in the Tropicana, wow. for me to perform. Eventually I had to stop because I was, I was really, really young, but there were people in the crowd who um, discovered me and they wanted to work with me and, and help me develop my voice. And those people told my parents about the Star Search auditions. And at first, I had to the Apollo. <laughs> I had to the Apollo. And, and then from there, I, I did Star Search and, and I, I had won the competition. So after that, it was just you know pretty crazy. It was all uphill from there. It was, it was all uphill from there, yeah. Now Cyrus, tell us, how did you transition from a hobby to a career? After the Apollo, I made $150 for that competition. Wow, well, I mean, that's better and, than nothing, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. And I started taking it serious. Uh, went back to the Apollo. I didn't win for the second time. I was sick. Uh, yeah. Now, that was tough. You know, when I was so young, and I'm like, okay. But what happened was, the first trip, I met Maurice Starr. You guys know he did new edition. He wrote a lot of the songs. Yeah. And Maurice Starr had a group with him. And I ended up joining this group. And I ended up getting signed to Emisco. I signed with Emisco and basically moved to LA. That's so cool. <laughs> and that's You were like, I'm yeah. headed to LA. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I moved to LA and worked with so many people. And that's pretty much how I started learning how to write. Now, I wasn't writing, but I was learning, you know. Okay. I've been working with so many different, you know, folks that I was able to pick up from. And so, I think when, as time went on, I was able to do a, I did a feature with Keisha Cole on her first album. Um, I don't know if you guys know, Superstar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I did that with her in the group, and we went on tour, and then... How was it like going on tour? I was good. You know, yeah. it was almost like, finally. <laughs> you were like, finally, I, finally the breakthrough I've been waiting for. And so it was good, and then the group kind of just went its own separate way. It was like right. the grind of the business, mm -hmm. you know, frustrations, yeah. all that. Like just like there's the glitz and glamour, then there's the downside. Now the downside where you get the nose, you got to hurry up and wait, and all those things. And those are the things that if I didn't have the upbringing from my parents, right. you wouldn't see me here right now. Right. I would have just. Yeah. It's not so you kept pushing because you had that support behind you telling you you can um, do this? The support started when I was younger, but as I got older, and I lost my father to cancer. So that was one. Um, you know, just my mom. Sorry. Sorry about that. 
okay. <laughs> you know, and um, losing my father to cancer was was like a serious trauma moment for me, yeah. you know, and so the only thing that kept me going was I know he would want me to keep going. He wouldn't want me to just hang it up. Right. You know? So I kept going, and I'm glad I kept going. <laughs> you know, so um, when the group finally split up, I decided to go to songwriting. And so I went into songwriting, I said, look, I'm gonna just, you know, I never really gave my all because I joined the group. You know, so when you join a group, it's like you have to wait your, you know, it's like your yeah, time is divided. You know, yeah. so you don't really, so I never really got to like see what I could really do with my voice. At one point, I didn't even think I could say that at some point because I stopped really doing lead vocals. You know, so that excitement that I had when I was young, kind of, you know, kind of slowly because of the business and yeah. do yeah, something to the confidence yeah. and the spirit, you know, yeah. and all that stuff. So in a way, I'm glad it happened. When you know, everyone went their separate way, I took a step back and I went into songwriting. I gave myself a four year plan. I said, you know what? I'm going to go, like the goal, I'm going to learn how to write, I'm going to publish it there. And sure enough, I got my publishing there in four years. Um, I signed with Universal, which I just got out of last week, thank God. So I got my publishing back. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. You know? um, so I got my publishing back now, but. I basically signed with them because. I know. Yeah, I'm like step over here. Yeah. So I, I signed with Universal because I, I was attached to this artist that was supposed to get signed to Interscope, and she didn't get signed. So now I'm stuck to the label, Universal, without an artist. Now, how is that working for a label versus working independently? What you thought about it? You okay. have. <laughs> working with a label. The cool thing is there's a machine behind you, so you have a bigger reach. The downside is you know you have to hurry up and wait. So when you feel you've put the most creative, artistic work together and you're like, this is a game changer, they're like, you're gonna have to wait. Because we wanna get the hottest producer on there. You know, we have our own folks who wanna get on it's a business. Everyone, you know what I mean, they have a team. Right. You know, so it's still a business, you know. I don't care how artsy and how creative or how nice you are, you know what I mean? It's still a business. a business. Whereas as an independent, you have full control. You know what I mean? You make the money comes to you. Like you got your publishing, it comes to you. You know what I mean? If you own the label, it comes to you. You know what I mean? And at the same time you gotta pay but you have full control. And in this era, this right now with technology, you need full control. And they're figuring it because the labels have figured out that we've wisened up. Mm. Yeah. I like that. Can we get a round of applause for that <laughs> one? We've we wisened up, you know? Yeah, so yeah. it's pretty much free for all. Mm. Like, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Anybody can do it. You know what I mean? As long as you got the will, you know, and the belief in yourself and a good support system. That's something that I didn't have as far as when I got into the music, because basically I left home. So I'm in LA with no guidance, no parents, at a young age. Right. I mean, it's right. tough, of, let alone when you go off to college and you're like, wait a minute, yeah. what am I doing? So Sorry. imagine just jumping in and you don't have like someone to, shark tank. right, yeah. it pretty much jumped into the shark tank. Mm. Um, but it's the upbringing that kept me. Tiffany, how about for you? How is it now that you're independent, you're finally free from the labels, how has your life changed significantly? <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, free, you know, um, the, the main thing is when you're, when you're signed to a label, just to piggyback off of what Cyrus said, you do have a, a big machine behind you, you have a major budget, possibly, um, and so, you know, it, it, the, the pros is, if it works out with the right people and, and, you know, you have A&Rs, and, and producers and mark the marketing team and executives who are not trying to 
dip into your budget, okay, behind your back and use the money for other things, possibly for, you know, self gain to put back into their own households or whatever. If you don't have that going on and then you you have the, the right people behind you believing in what you have going on, then you you do possibly have a, a, a good chance at succeeding with the label. Um, and most of the time that's really, really hard to find. You need that that you need at least I would say two good people in your corner who really would go to bat for you right. Um, right. And, and, and push you the way that you need to be pushed um, regardless of if you have a budget or not, you know, um, because it, it starts with the belief. Um, and so the cons is, is that, you know, growing up, if you're growing up in it, they're going to try to put, they're going to try many different things with you. Mm. Um, so basically you're like a puppet. You're like a and it's Sporty, not what yeah. everybody kind of portrays to see because yeah. when you're looking at these celebrities, you're like, wow, you know, they have the best life. They yeah. have the cars, they yeah. the houses. It's not really it's that not what it's, it's not what it's cut out to no. be, basically, what you're And you about. can eventually get all of those things. Um, but, you know, it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a job, you know. It's in, in our job, to be honest, y'all, I'm going to keep it real with y'all, is to make things look good, as good as possible. Right. Everything right. is a look, right. and that's just real, that's real tea, no shade. Everything is, um, everything is a look. It has to be a good look, and you could be going, you could be a starving artist, but when you go to certain events, you could be Gucci down to the socks, right. you know what I'm saying? And you got to take the clothes off at the end of the event, though, right. you know what I'm saying? So, um, it's not really all that it's, it's hyped up to be, but... If you if you do stay persistent and 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 consistent, and you believe in yourself, you believe in the gift that you have and what and, and, and the movement that you got going on, and then you have the right people. Because I always say this: you're only as strong as your team. And most of the time, sometimes we lose energy, we lose passion, we we lose confidence because of the people that we're surrounded by, and and and. Sometimes they could be draining the life out of us more than anything, you know. Um, it, it's so important to build. If you have an artist, it's so important to continue to build them. Because we, we get broken down easily. We're, there's so many times that we hear no. So many times that we hear that, okay, this is not good enough. You sound like. You sound like. Or, you know, or you don't sound. You, you need to sound like. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it is the worst because, you know, you find yourself confused about who you are and what you really want to do right. and, and the great thing about being independent is that um you you got creative control and and i mean i feel like it's not like i would never you know sign with a a, a major company again um but this time I would build myself to a point where i have leverage you know i could go into the room with the executives with the people who are the shot callers and be like, you know, I have my own movement going on, you know, you guys are coming to me and I wanna negotiate a deal. You know, I don't wanna I don't wanna accept the deal that you're giving me. And and social media, as much as I say I don't like it, it has given many people a platform to do that, to walk into these buildings and say, Hey, like, I have a, I have I have a million followers. This 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 came off of you know, blood, sweat, and tears. I, I post great content. I figured out my formula and what works for me and what people want to see me do. I, I, sell, I, sell, I sell out shows. You know, even though I'm underground, there's a lot of people that will come and, 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 and you know, buy up tickets just to see me perform, just to see me, you know, do what I do best. So, you know, what do you guys have to offer me? And, and that's really what, you know, the, the advantage of, of being independent and successfully independent. So that's basically like you have control of yourself. You have control, you have of control over yourself. Yeah. Now how would you say you can market yourself? With you know, there's just so much competition out there, especially with social media, to get even like maybe even a hundred or above views is hard. How would you say you guys would market yourself? Like what she said, um, what works for you. Like some people do the viral thing. Yeah. But okay. some, you know, some people want to show that they can really sing. Yeah. Really, really dance or yeah. do skits, you know. Yeah. Right, sorry. Or do skits, on your, and it's really pretty much anything that separates you from you know, what what separates you. You, you know? gotta stand out. You gotta stand out, or 
go do what people have done forever. Do shows. Right. Yeah. Now, how do artists go about looking for shows? Because I know that's another like hard thing when I'm surrounded by artists like Thankfully for Lee Live, we have the Notes of Hope Benefit concert and a couple other local shows, but there's not as many, especially down here in South Jersey. How would they go about looking for that? Um, if you got to travel out of state to, to do a show, do it. Uh, listen, I, I, I used to live in Boston. Um, I would travel to New York to do shows every weekend. Okay. For real. You know what I mean? Like, I would up and down, listen. Up and down the New York streets, drag my suitcase. Yeah. It's, it's, sometimes you gotta go rare. where it's hot. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes, sometimes you gotta, gotta put go yourself. It's, it's, it's about putting yourself. Excuse me, I'm sorry, yeah. but it's, it's about putting yourself in the midst of you know what's going on. So right. You know, you right. have, you you have to get out there. Right New York, Atlanta. New York. Atlanta, <laughs> Atlanta is definitely Especially a good Atlanta. market for, yeah. for music and, and yeah. people who want to break yeah. out. Now, would you say it's harder because the competition is higher, or do you say like it's regular like anywhere else? Um, there's competition everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, there's competition everywhere. You just gotta find the niche, the people. You know what I mean? Who you work with. You know, like I moved to Atlanta in 2014. No song placements. Just got out of a deal. Wow. Didn't know no one from a hole in the wall. 2014, 15, 2016. I got my first place, but it's 2017, I went to the Grammys. Like, That's amazing. Like, How was the Grammy? Um, it was inspiring. That's why I'm standing here, sitting here right now with you. Yeah. You know, um, what, what happened with me, something that hit me. You know, few moments in an in, in artist's life, you know, they hold on to. Whether it's when people say something to you and it sticks. For me, um, I had a, I was sitting at home and trying to figure out who to write write for, you know, I'm, I'm songwriter. Like, I don't, I've been working on it. I vocal arrange, R&B, I can do pop, I can do country, I can do hip hop. I, I ghost write for rappers sometimes, low key, I ain't gonna say who. And, uh -oh, and, we don't have to do the and, and I'm sitting there on the phone, on Instagram, mm -hmm. and I seen, they said TLC was, you know, putting something together and needed songs. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, how we gonna work this? I seen the number, hey, besides the ship, sign Universal, <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all need some records or whatever, and they told me to come through. So did the label back you up? No. Um, um, this, 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 this is when you're in the groundwork. Okay. This is the groundwork. Oh. This is the groundwork. So I get there, I get to the room, and I'm playing I'm playing the pop stuff for Chili, and I'm playing the R&B stuff, and she keeps asking me on each song, who's that singing? And I'm like, that's me. She was like, get the I was like, no, for real, that's me. Oh, that's me. She's like, here's something for me right now in my ear. She's singing in your ear? So I did it. She was like, all right. Wow. Kept playing, kept playing, kept playing. I swear. So after I was done playing, she pulled me to the side. And she said, why are you in this room writing, trying to write? Like, I think you still got work to do. That's what she told me. That's inspiring. She said, you still got work to do. And after that, the very first song I wrote after that day was my first placement. I swear to God. That was the first placement that um, Belle Biv DeVoe, the new edition. They picked the song, All That There. Before you know it, I did um, the song with them with SWV. I did two more songs on the album. They just had me just write it. I just kept writing for them. That's amazing. And so when the new edition movie came out, they put the BBD album out on that same day. And I had 50% of the writing on that. I wrote in my bedroom in my bedroom, you know, and that was just the start. That was my first start. And then after that, you know, I got on Music Soul Child album, and, and the rest, and here we are, and, you know, that's what I'm doing. So we're gonna take it back to when you were talking about going through these down stages. Because a lot of people go through it, you know, they're, they're struggling, they're struggling artists, they're trying to get up there to the top. Tell me about that feeling and how were you able to overcome it? Um, okay, that's loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> as creators, our emotions and feelings are at our fingertips. So, like she said, the environment that you're in, you know, it's important to you growing. For me, unfortunately for me, I was in an environment that made me almost forget I had talent. 
you know, I had to step out of that environment. So the reason why everything was on the downside for me was because I was in an environment that caused me to not even believe in myself. So if you're in an environment where you, um, I'm just here, like, I'm just here. Just bring me to do my part. I go sit down, I buy video games, I play. Don't lose passion. Right. Don't lose passion. I started to almost like, I'm just happy to be here. Right, right. You were like, and that's family. not who I, I've never been that type. You know, I've always been the one to just jump in. You know, I tell you a story. When I got, I'm, I'm six years old when I got my first bike. I told him to take the training wheels off. I don't wear a training wheel at six years old. I forgot that six year old kid. I, I yes, forgot who, I, the, the kid that would say, I can do it, I can right, do it, right. was gone. And that's what the business sort of, kind of, yes. could do to someone if, you know, you know, pay attention. Now, would you say that was because of the label, all those um, restraints the, that you had? Or? It, it restraints, different people who don't really, aren't really in your corner like mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. trying to put their own people on, mm -hmm. dipping into, the, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, so, many, yeah. so many different things. Everyone has a similar story, different situations, but same results a lot of times. Yeah. Look at the look at the artist right now that's killing it, Drake. Drake is winning because Drake has a team. Right, right. You know so it's who's standing in your corner. It's in your corner, and they win him. They're running through fire with Drake. Mm -hmm. You know, let's let's name them. Beyonce, they're running through fire. Yeah, he has. <laughs> Beyonce. I heard Beyonce's parents put up their house because they believe in her so much. Wow. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. You gotta have, you gotta have that kind of support. What? People who are um, consistent along with you. Um, consistency is everything. It's it's everything. And and like you said, you know, sometimes, you know, we are going through the, the rough patches. Um, some people fall away, you know. Yes. Some people back off, and and and, Good job. and and while you're still building yourself up, it's like it's like you're pushing, and you're like, okay, no, we still got this. We, we still got this. Let's do this. Let's keep going. Let's keep pushing. And as those people are falling away, it's kind of like it get it, it can get discouraging, and you start to feel like, man, like, am I going in circles? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? But a lot of the biggest celebrities, a lot of the biggest artists in the world, right now, have gone through so many different things you you have no idea everybody goes through so much you know i used to hear stories about destiny's child performing out in the rain and beyonce having to perform in two left shoes you know it just to get the performance done but still but st you know what i'm saying and showing people that you know like no matter what i'm, I'm going to conquer this thing so um yeah it's just all about the people around you that's just as important as you believing in yourself. Yeah. You can't, um, it's never a one a, a one man show. It's never oh. that, don't ever believe that. It's, uh, you know, you have the gift, you have the talent and people can, you know, you, you can believe in that and that can take you far, but you do need a strong team. You do need a support system. You need, you need your parents for women who have, does anybody in here have children? Right. Women who have children. Um, who want to become artists? I, I have I have daughters, so I know like I know what it's like because I, I started in this industry, you know, as a as a young lady, and and, and I grew up in it, and I ended up having uh, children, and that that gets difficult. That gets extremely difficult. The time management, being able to find someone who's going to take care of your children while you pursue your dreams. Being able to surround yourself with people who, are, who aren't going to say, why did you have a child if you want to do this? Right. Um, this is not going to work for you if you have a child. You have to be a mother first. Sit down. Don't, you know, don't pursue your dreams. Get a nine to five. Whatever the case may be, you're going to run into those people. And it, sometimes it could be your parents. Yep. Sometimes it could be your brother, your sister, your friend who would tell you, like, honestly, I think you should give this up. And it could be a lifelong dream of yours. But I'm here to tell you, like, the reason why I had my children is to prove to people that you can still be consistent. You can still be whatever you believe you're going to be. You can be that. And, and, and it doesn't have to, you know, whether those people are in your life or not, you can still be what you plan to be. And um, 
you know, just don't, I can't say don't ever let anybody get you down because sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's life. It's natural to feel uh, discouraged. It's natural to feel disappointed. It's natural to to cry about people not believing and, right. and losing confidence. It's, it's so natural. Do not let anyone make you believe that they haven't felt a down moment in their life. Everyone, um, everyone has. Everyone has been told no, including Beyonce, including Usher, including all of the people that we are inspired by. They have received a no in something. And even still to this day, you know, there are people that talk about them. But they still are who they are. They have still uh, conquered the game. They have still become, you know, what they set out to become, you know. Right. Right. And 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 none of that stopped them. It may have discouraged them, but they kept going. Right. So I would say, children is not uh, a deal breaker. <laughs> right. You know, what I'm saying going through a bad relationship and you know getting distracted for a little bit is not a deal breaker. If right. you decide to get back up and keep going and and do your thing and invest in yourself and, right. and, and just keep that mindset right. then it's all it, it's all it's all on you it's all on you and like i said make it make it your your duty to keep people around you who who aren't yes men um but honest. they but they're honest and they believe. Period. That's all you need yeah. around you. You need people yeah. to believe all in you. You need yeah. people to believe in you. Just like all these Period. beautiful people here. Let them go. I don't care applies. who they are. If they don't believe, let them let go. go. Let it go. Let them go because no one should ever be discouraged yep. from doing anything mm -hmm. that they believe in their heart they should be doing. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is your journey, your path. This is it's, it's, You deal with yourself at night time. Right. You know, they, these people don't go to bed with you. They don't know what's in your mind. They don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. And you have to sit at home alone at night and deal with yourself and say, okay, I'm letting year by year, month by month, day by day pass. Is this how I really want to live my life? I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. Am I really going to allow these people to stop me? Right. And that's the kind of mindset you got to have. And that's a beautiful mindset to have. Absolutely. Yeah, now, who would you say is your greatest influence in the industry? Sir? All right. Let's, let's, let's clean that. Let's see. In, not, not that I'm working, just overall. Just overall. overall. Who, who inspires you? Um, okay. <laughs> Michael Jackson. Okay. I love okay. his music. I'm, I'm not going for it. Let's see. Let's see. You know, it's funny because my boyfriend said, don't bring up Michael Jackson. No, Chrissy. no, no. And I said, you know what? He's still one of the greatest. Yeah, 100%. You know? 100%. Because, let me see. I'm not the moment. But Michael Jackson. Yeah, you get that, that, that but, um, <laughs> Michael Jackson, Shabba Ranks. Um, Shabba. Shabba, right? Um, left you. He didn't expect that. Yeah. Right. Now, I think Shabba was one of the talented ones. I'll tell you. Shabba was talented. Was a, Shabba. Whitney. Whitney, um, Tupac, Biggie. Okay, okay. And my parents. Oh, yeah. that is so sweet. <laughs> what about you, sir? Um, I'm definitely a major, major, major Usher fan. Okay. I mean, come on now, it's Usher, y'all. Like he, um, he's just, he's just, he's just a goat, you know. Um, right. Beyonce, of course. Uh, I love Drake. Okay. I love Chris Brown. I actually want to do a record with him. I know I'm gonna do a record with him. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> I know I'm gonna do a record with him. Now what about Sierra? Okay. Sierra. Um, I love Sierra. I think Sierra is really, really dope, and I think she's extremely passionate about what she does. Um, she's a she's an awesome performer. Um, a beautiful woman. How was it like working with her? Um, she's pretty, she's just dope, you know? She's just, she's Sierra. <laughs> she's Sierra and, um, you know, back then she was just, you know, she was really, really saucy and, you know, just real, real vibrant. And she was, you know, new to the industry as well and um, kind of accepted me with, with open arms and it was fun. I mean, it's been a minute, but <laughs> it was fun. That's awesome. 
So we all know that the industry is constantly evolving. And it takes all kinds of different things to quote unquote blow up. What do you guys think is like a new way that people are able to blow up within the music industry? Um, I guess that's social media. Social media. <laughs> social, social media. Um, it's just, it allows you to have a platform. Those who didn't have access before now have access to showcase themselves. Um, and you get to hear about, you know, a lot of events that you could participate in. Um, a lot of, you know, different people that you can get yourself around. And different ways to showcase your music. SoundCloud. A lot of independent people have blown up over SoundCloud. Right. Um, and have built fan bases where to where they could you know tour and actually you know sell out their tours. Um, I think that's pretty pretty awesome. Now, what do you guys think is the best thing about being a performer? I know there's a lot. But. Yeah, no, that's that's why, that's why it's almost like you get to share something that as far as a writer or creator, you get to share something and see how people react to it and see. You know, and you can also learn from it. Mm. Okay, she wasn't feeling that, okay. Right, you were right. feeling that, you know what I mean? So it, it's almost like an a, a, a exchange. You know yeah. I mean? Just like as you're giving, you know, they're giving you because mm -hmm. they're giving you their response to what you're giving. So, so you're learning yeah, from You're learning from that. all the time. Yeah. All the time, like as creators, like you put us in the studio and we all want to play damn near every song that we, <laughs> we got new for each other. Like we've been there playing, or oh, listen to this. And we, you'll be there all night, guaranteed. If, right, right. if, if someone is a writer, a producer, they gonna sit in that studio and just try and go back and forth just playing stuff because you just want to just get response and feedback. Right. Well, tell me what you think about this. You know what I mean? So as a performer, it's the same thing. You know, you can't wait for them to hear what I've been working on. Yeah. And, and see if they like it. So do you think that you're trying? Do you think that people should like basically mold themselves to what's popping now, or do you think they should kind of be their own? Um, you know I think, they? you know, <laughs> funny thing is, I read this. You know, this is all about the music business book. Before I got into songwriting, one of the things that I read before I started songwriting, it was like, if you want to make money in the music business, it said you have to pay attention to what's going on. Uh, if you just want to be a super creative, then go ahead and do whatever you want to do. Yeah, that's awesome. mm -hmm. you know that makes a lot of sense. But, you know, you can also take some of your extra super artsy creative and still mix it up into what's going on and create you. You know what I mean? And you automatically are going to create you. you know what I mean? like no that, one's yeah. lived her life. So mm -hmm. when she creates her music, you know, it's going to be coming from what she's dealt with. I was able to live in like four different African countries, so a lot of times the melodies that I might put in my songs aren't typical R&B because I grew up in Ghana, I grew up in Ivory Coast, I grew up in Liberia, you know, and, and I'm, I speak a little different, I speak French. I learned, oh, that's awesome. I learned, you know, and so majority of the music that I write is going to be a mixture of that, and that's me, you know, and so let's say if I wrote the song for Tiffany, when she translated, it's going to be her. Right, because right. she's bringing in her own thing. So that's really, yeah. Anything? Um, you said everything. <laughs> I so what made you guys want to do this? No to hope? Um, I felt it was time to step up. Yeah. You know, and also the reason behind what was going on, you know, they're my cousins. <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> You were like, I gotta help. <laughs> I was help like, family I'm, out. I'm, I'm down, you know, and it's my cousins, and they know I love music so much, yeah. you know, and they, you know, they, they've been watching me, you know, do what I've been doing, you know, so they, they're like, yo, Cyrus, you know, come on in, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm coming in. It's just such a beautiful, you know, organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. For me, I, I love, I love when. Um, we present opportunities to aspiring artists. Um, you know, it's like, sort of like passing the torch. You know what I'm saying? But like so many people want to just hold on to the position that they're in and they don't want to spread any knowledge. They don't want to spread any any wisdom because they're afraid that they might lose their spot. You're not going to lose anything that was meant for you, okay? 
So, you know, I think it's super awesome that, you know, you guys are um, just presenting an opportunity for yeah. people to learn right. about, you know, the industry, the business, all while giving back at the same time. Yeah. I think that's, and, and raising awareness at the same time. I think that's absolutely amazing. And, you know, I love to be a part of anything that's selfless um, and that builds the people. So, kudos to those whole baby. Woo! That's a hug. So you guys are performing some new stuff tomorrow. Who wants to go first and give us some hints about what new projects you're working on? I, well, you know, I really can't say much because every time I say something, I always get in trouble about my purposes. <laughs> and he'd be like, why did you tell them the name of your project? <laughs> We're not ready to drop and you need to shut up. So uh, basically, I am working on a new project. Uh, I've been working on it for a minute because, you know, for me, it just has to be right. And I know that once I drop this project, I'm gonna be really, really consistent. Like, once it drops, it's just the initial project has to be, it has to be five, you know what I'm saying? So, um, it's it's coming at spring, summer. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to like, watch my words. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you guys are going to be getting some music. Okay, you're going to get new music in April and some videos. So I'm really excited about that. It's going to be the age. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be so lit. And I'm really excited about We're that. We're excited to hear it. So. Yeah, it's fine. Same. Um, I've been working on this project for a while. Um, so some videos and some singles are going to be coming out soon. Um, I just put out put out one single, I think sometime in February. Um, I'm about to release a video for that one. It's called, that's exciting. It's, been, it's called Nonstop. Okay. Uh, that's how I've been going. I've been going nonstop. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hear that. Right. <laughs> so right. So yeah, I'm excited about it. The sounds is different. You know, it's a mixture of everything I've experienced. You know. You're gonna hear some African sounds on the R&B track. Uh -oh. you know, African sounds on it's the hip hop. Really nice. you, you're just you're gonna hear something, you know, different. You know, the cool thing is Afrobeats is popping right now, and what I what I'm bringing is, you know, there's there's so many different languages in Africa, you know. So my music is gonna be in a little bit Afrobeats, but okay. I'm gonna bring it from a different sound. And, you know, like for example, I'll give you an example. Okay, um, you know, they say Africans would have heavy accents. You don't hear it right now, right? Nope. All right, you okay. It. Bring it on. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, in, let's say, in Ghana, you know, in Nigeria, the accents are, you know, what have you been doing? You know, <laughs> you know whereas in, in Liberia, I mean, what have you been doing? I've been sitting, I've been sitting here, I've been, I can't hear a long time, I ain't here there. What, 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 what? That's how I normally talk around the house. You know what I mean? That's good. And I, that's they, they're laughing because they understood every line. You know what's so funny? One of um, my best friends, she's from uh, Liberia. Oh, wow. Yes. And, oh, wow. <laughs> yes, she's Ebony. She's related to uh, Leila. And, yeah, she's uh -oh. cousins of Leila. And, uh, Ebony Cummings. He's like, who? Oh. Shout out to Ebony Cummings <laughs> and Erica Cummings. Um, but yeah, like they, they they teach me like a lot of different things. Like, uh, uh, okay. I, they call me, I don't know if you guys say this, but they be like, uh, Tiffany, you like my business too much. <laughs> you like my business too much. You like my business too much. You like my business too much. Okay. <laughs> so you know they always get after me. Wow. That's awesome. That's pretty awesome. That's well, I can't let you guys leave the stage or get answers from the audience yet until you ask, until you answer the infamous question. What do you think makes an unsung hero? Sarah, what do you think? I know you have an answer. Come on. Yeah, I have it written down. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. You really have it written down, though, y'all. Yeah. Serious about this. Hold on. Okay, so let me see that. Unsung hero. So unsung hero, basically, you know, I had to think about it, you know, because I've never been asked that question before. A lot of people I you know, interview say the same thing. So and I think an unsung hero is someone who's gone through so much, regardless of gender, race, religion, that 
One second. He's like, hold on. Let me we gotta do this right. Like, I'm not about to give you all the wrong information. They'll be like, what was he talking about, man? So, unsung hero basically is. We were waiting for you to write a rap about it. No, that ain't good. Uh One second. I got you. One second. An unsung hero to me is someone whose experiences we all can relate to. Um, but it, like, almost like if I didn't come here and speak to you guys, you guys wouldn't wouldn't know my life. You wouldn't know what hardships or what trials and tribulations I've overcome. You know, an unsung hero is someone who don't have a spotlight on them. You know, but they're going through something just as you know maybe you. You know what I mean? Or someone who may have a spotlight on them. Like we all know, let's pick someone. Right now, and that we all know is going through something, and we're like, let's choose, ah, Jesse Smiley, we can't choose that. <laughs> no, 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 not Jesse. But regardless, you know, someone who's in the public eye that's gone through a trial that we all feel bad for or can relate to. The difference of unsung hero is someone who isn't in the in the spotlight. Right, right who, on. Who isn't in the spotlight but has gone through enough to write a dang old book. Mm, <laughs> you know I hear I mean? that. Yeah, I know you can relate. Absolutely. Um I, you know, to me honestly, um an unsung hero is it, it, it could be any of us, you know. Like uh you don't even have to do music, you know. Um anybody who once again, it's, it's selfless. And um, whether you do the arts or you know, you work a nine to five or you work at the hospital and you know, you're not broadcasted on TV every day, you know, your life is not, you know, glorified or anything right. like that. Even the deeds that you do that may be, you know, um, helpful to mankind, period. The kindness out of your heart, showing love to people, being able to encourage people, give give people, um, you know, a sense of hope. Right. Come on, notes of hope. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, that, that, to me, is an unsung hero. Um, and like I said, it doesn't have to be a person who, who does music or... Um, or any anything that has to do with the arts or whatever. It, it could be anybody. And, and you do it from the love in your heart. You know what I'm saying? You, you do it because you genuinely want to do that. You know? And uh, like I said, it's, it's many of us in this room, many of you guys who are sitting here listening, you probably encourage a lot of people in your life. A lot of people around you probably don't even receive uh, you know, reciprocity, you know, you don't, you don't, get, you may not get that in return, you may not get praise in return, um, but are deserving of it. Um, and, um, you know, I just, I just want to say, remain that way, you know, and, and, and always let God see your deeds, let God see your good deeds, the things that you, that you do for people, um, to help people to, to grow and, and manifest themselves, their dreams, you know. Let him see those good deeds and, and you, you're going to be rewarded uh, publicly So, Well, I know I'm sitting right here next to two on some heroes. Don't you guys agree? Yeah. Woo! So, at this moment, we're going to open it up to the audience. If anybody has some questions for Cyrus and Tiffany, please raise your hand and Rich is going to come on over with the mic. <laughs> Cyrus and Tiffany, hello. Hey, girl. Hello. Uh, congratulations to you guys both for Red Hood's win. Thank you. One year you made it. Um, I have a question. Right now, um, I'm kind of going through a hard struggle myself. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Open Locks. <laughs> My life right now is kind of like a whole mess. Um, what I'm kind of going through right now, oh, this one's working. Uh, <laughs> is a kind of like imposter syndrome. I've been getting a lot of texts from people and DMs saying that I'm doing such an amazing job and that they feel inspired by what I've created. Um, but it doesn't translate to numbers. And lately, I've just been finding myself crying a lot lately and just been so down at the dumps. I don't really know 
how to get over like this some kind of imposter syndrome. I guess I just kind of want to know like if you guys have ever been through that, and then how did you navigate going through it? Imposter syndrome. Can somebody enlighten me? Yeah. Can yeah. you enlighten me? Yeah, you know, my good friend Latoya here is an intellectual. So. Okay. <laughs> yes, let's hear from Latoya. Hi. School um, me, honey, please. Imposter syndrome is like when you feel like you don't belong in the room. So maybe like in your mm. Okay. Um, maybe like in your instance, like maybe you're in an audition or something and you mm. feel like, oh, this girl next to me is way better. Like I'm not mm. meant to be in this mm. room. Mm. Ooh, that is so crazy. Me and my friend Jawan Harris was just talking about that. Uh, he's a singer as well. and. You know, we like we've been doing this for a long time, you know, and and have done things that, you know, were deserving of a, uh, you know, uh, acclimatize and recognition and all of that. And we still felt like when we were walking in, in in the room of our peers, we would be like, man, like we ain't as good as them, you know, right, like right. we're not supposed to be here. Like, what are we, what are we doing here? And. Um, I was, I was just, I was just telling him. I was like, we gotta get out of that. Yeah. Gotta get out of that because if you're in the room, you're supposed to be there. There would be no way that you would be in the room if you weren't supposed to be in the room. And 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 that's exactly how how you have to look at it. Yeah. Timing is everything. Timing is everything. Some things we are prepared for, and then some things we're not prepared for. We gotta take a little more time on it. And that doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. That doesn't mean that it's not going to manifest itself. Um, and it doesn't mean that you're not going to get discouraged right. waiting on the time to arrive. But I would say, take that time to prepare, to expand your mind, to wisen, wisen up, equip. And, and know that, okay, when the time comes, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I know exactly what I'm going to say. Yep. I know exactly how I'm going to walk. Yep. It is down to, it's down to the attitude and how you see things. Starts you know, take that time of you being in the, in the wilderness alone, feeling alone and feeling like nobody understands you, to hone into your crap yeah. for the moment. Because yeah. your moment will come, I'm telling you. Your moment right. will come. Anything that comes out of your mouth, anything that you envision, anything that you believe is going to happen for you, it will. It will. And that's why you have to be careful what you say out your mouth, what you believe. Be careful to um, not speak negative over your life because your your, your tongue has an amazing power. power. Yep. Extreme. I'm not even... You know, I, I'm 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 a believer, but for for those who are believers, not believers, whatever the case may be, regardless, your tongue is powerful, and you put it out there in the atmosphere. You have you have you have the 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 ability to control what happens in your life as as far as what comes out of your mouth and, and what manifests. So what you want to speak is great things over yourself. Right. Um. And for your life. Because just because it doesn't happen then doesn't mean that it's not going to happen later. Right. You just, you're just you just in the wilderness and you're in the valley. Yep. Okay? And, 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 you know, it's like, life is like, you go up, you go down, you go up, you go down, you go up, you go, and that's it. That will happen forever. Nobody's going to remain at the top. Right. Nobody. You reach the top, you're there, it's lit, you're crying, it's cool, everybody happy. You go. You got to go back down for the right. next phase of your life. Right. Okay. And so this phase of your life, you're in preparation. You're walking through the valley. So now you're about to enter. You're, you're getting prepared for the next phase. And then I, it's going to be your mountain. Let me speak on right. And the proof to that, I was in New York. I was by teller, and I seen him in the studio, and something told me, "You're not ready, bro." I swear, something told me you're not ready. And I was like, you know what? When the time is right, I'm going to play all the music for her. Wow. I'm going to tell her how I am. And now look. Wow. That's how I know. And it's been how that's long? How I know. It's been a long time. It's been years, huh? It's been years. And during that entire time, I didn't say never. Right. I just kept writing. Right. And just writing. 
my cousin and my aunts they're here and they'll tell you <laughs> I just kept writing. Right. You know? Right. So so well, what you're saying, mm -hmm. you know, don't feel like you don't belong. Right. That's you take that time and just make sure you prepare yourself. Just prepare that's the oh, that's the best thing you can do. Is prepare yourself up here. Yeah. yeah. With your skill. You're in the room. If you're not in the room to to to, to showcase what you got, you're in the room to learn. Right. That's it. That's so don't beat yourself up. That's it. Your time is coming. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anybody else who would like to ask a question? I just want to thank you guys for taking your time to answer some questions. Thank you. Um, part of the Young Picasso's band that uh, played a little bit earlier. Um, we're still, oh, thank you, thank you. We're still finding our way. Um, became a LLC because we didn't want to go through, what is it? What is it, like universal and all that stuff? Yeah. Labels, labels. The labels, the labels. The labels. Yeah. We wanted to do everything independent. Yeah. Um, so I just want you to speak, both of you guys, if you can speak on just building a team. What are some like integral parts you want in your team backing you up? Because um, this, I, I had this talk with them yesterday, like there's a lot of paperwork that we do and I I hate signing contracts and all the paperwork, but I like booking gigs. <laughs> so like, I'm, I'm hitting them up like, yo, we need a secretary ASAP, da, da, da. so like, can you just like pick out certain things that you think, I guess, uh, uh, entertainment team should have? I, I'm gonna I'm a make this short and sweet. Um, great management is, is, is key. Great management, um, because you, you, you're gonna need um, someone to go to bat for you and, and help you understand the contracts that you're in front of. Um, I always say, as an independent artist, let people eat what they kill. Meaning, if they want you to sign paperwork and they're not showing you the what they can do before the paperwork, if they're not showing, because honestly, a person who knows that they can bring a lot to the table, they have nothing to lose by showing you. They have nothing to lose. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, you take the loss if you decide not to work with them or whatever. They know that they're going to continue to keep going forward because they know what they have to offer. So I would say, you know, I hate contracts too, but there's a way that you can um, understand them. And, and that's by, you know, having a good lawyer and having good management and someone who's willing, those those people are willing to break it down to you, um, you know, what it is that you're that you're signing to and what your part of the 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 um, process is, you know, what you have to do. So I would I would just say you, you really you, it's like it's kinda like being in a relationship. Um I'm not going to go far with you if I don't feel like you're interested and if I don't see that you're consistent and, and if, I, if I don't see that you're like going, you're pursuing me, you know, so I'm, I can't, I mean, what can you do with that? You, you're in it by yourself. So that's, that's what you want. You want that type of energy from anyone on your team, whether it be a lawyer or a manager or a marketing team, you need people with fire and, um, and, and like I said, belief. I love it. Um, how many of you guys? Four, five? Three. Three. It's three of y'all, right? Who who's good with paper? Paperwork. That's Pete right here. That's your that's your manager. Okay. That's the that's the guy. You heard him, Pete. Until you get the manager, <laughs> right. that's your guy who look over the paper. That's the guy who, you know, maybe get the lawyer. You know what I mean? And, and talks to the lawyer. Then you guys deliberate amongst each other. You know, who's good with art? Nobody, right? No, that's, that's there goes your design. graphic designer. <laughs> right. I'm sure he got some friends that do art. You know what I mean? The, yeah. You know what I mean? The trees, you know, the fruits on the same tree. So, you know, I'm sure he knows some buddies. And there goes your, your, your arts, your art division. There you go. You know, until, you know, you are able to get a full, legit team of people who that's their sole job. So right now you guys already have the foundation. That foundation, now you just take that 
form and build. And then the right guy's going to come up. And then the manager guy, he's going to be, okay, cool. There you go, manager. Now he's back to full, you know what I'm saying? Until you guys get it together, you know what I mean? But for now, you already got your, you already got it leveled together already. We got manager, we got art, you know what I mean? And I'm still trying to figure out what it is. You, 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 you do music. You, you, you're the music guy. You know what I'm saying? So you're in charge to make sure everyone's in key, everyone got the rhythm right. But if, if it's the business guy, then then that's fine. Both of you guys work together. You know, take the Lord off of him. Make so sure he's the mind. music is done. Yeah, right. So you just take it upon yourself to make sure the music is done while business guy is working on it. Because he can't do it all, you know. He needs the mind to look, look over the numbers. And that's your squad, at least until you get your manager, you know, and the lawyer and all of that stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Um, manager's gonna show up. Oh, he's gonna show up. Well, he don't show up. Oh, he definitely gonna show up. <laughs> Anybody else have a question? They would like. Hi, you guys. My name is hey. Campaign What's Marte. Hey. Hi. Um, I'm a radio show host, and I wanted to know how did you guys overcome like backlash that you may have received when you were at your big break. So when you got your first big moment, how did you receive that and then how did you handle it? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, you know, like, I, my first big moment, um, you know, honestly, I didn't really know what was going on. <laughs> I was a kid <laughs> and I just wanted to do music. Uh, Honestly, it turned my stomach because I saw a lot of adults acting the fool, you know, over money and over success and it letting them become people who disgusted me as a, as a kid. And I was just like, I'm the one who did it. <laughs> but it made them different people. It made them evil people. Um... Yeah, and how I handled it was I, I couldn't I couldn't do anything about it for a while because you know you're a kid. Like, what, what do you know? Wilderness. What do you know? You know, I had to remain quiet. I stayed to myself a lot actually. I just really wanted to do music. Like I I understand you know the business and and what all you have to do to be successful, but um, I hated the way those victories made the people around me become or reveal who they really are. So I retreated and I stayed to myself. I retreated and stayed to myself until I got older. And I said I, was, I wasn't gonna, you know, deal with that. I know it sounds crazy and I know it probably doesn't sound like a, a normal answer, but that's how I dealt with it. So as far as industry friends, were you still cool with them? Or like did your relationship kind of go up and down? My relationships went up and down. People got jealous. When I, you know, succeeded at certain things, things that they couldn't do that I could do, you know, it was just like a, a competitive energy all the time. But it wasn't, I believe in, you know, friendly competition being used to build each other, like, you know, like, having fun with it, like, okay, like, step your game up, you know what I'm saying? Like, I believe in that, but it's a difference when it's jealousy, mm -hmm. and they don't want you to, they don't want you to win, they don't, it, it becomes negative, and it's just like, oh, well, I can do that too, you ain't no better than me, it's not, it's not even about that, it's about building each other, really, um, and I just saw a lot of that beginning to shift within my family, within my friends, you know, me not being home, I wasn't home a lot. I'm still not home a lot, but I wasn't home a lot. I used to be on the road all the time. So a lot of my friends, people who I thought were my friends, would be like, so you think you're better than us? You can't talk to us? You, you know, it was never any of those things, but it was because other people were loving me and sending me positive energy that um, it was beginning to affect them, but negatively. You get what I'm saying? And, and, I, and the negative part comes in because I just felt like they never really wanted me to win. Because I know for my friend, I, I, I would want, if I see success on my friend, I, I, want, I want you to win. 
I want you because it's enough room for all of us. I can, I can still do the same thing that you do. I can sing down. If you sing too, we dance down. There's no way that we can't be successful together. And that's how I view it. And I didn't get that same energy in return. So I just, you know, retreated and, and stayed, stayed to myself. And I went through a lonely phase. I went through a very, very lonely phase. Yeah. My big moment, honestly, I feel I haven't had one yet, but in the big moments in my, in my life, um, what happened was, business the way it is they want you to be talented but it teaches you to not believe in yourself you know and I say that because like like she was saying they they, they pick you apart you get picked apart so when I had my big moment and everything went the way it was you know I started, how can I say it, you know, you got to see the good in other people. You know what I'm saying? If you can't see the good in other people, then you got to just chill for a second, like right? take, a, take a step back. Because that's what the music business at one point would have someone doing. You know, like she was saying, like, you're, you're supposed to be my friend. And you're like looking at me as if you don't even know me. Like as if we're not even cool. The co competition for no reason, unnecessary, you know. And when you see that, and you're not even on that wavelength, what she, or what I've done, I take a step back and I reevaluate me, what I want, what I want to do, and what I'm currently doing. You know, so you go into the wilderness because it's along the same lines of when you feel almost like not say you, where you feel you don't belong or where you feel you don't belong in a room. But then it's neck and neck. You, gotta, you have to reevaluate when you when you um, deal with certain things in life, like what you said. So when you receive any backlash or whatever it is, you have to take a step back and observe. Like like a flower won't grow in the right environment. You won't grow in the wrong. You know what I'm saying in, in the wrong environment, you won't grow. And that's the same thing. You know, if you're supposed to be growing, you got people pulling you down. You know it ain't gonna last long. You out of here. That's how I am. And that, 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 that's, that's, that's what I can say. Thank you, guys. Okay. Do we have time for one more question? I think so. Um, so, I'm huge fans of you both. Um, Thank you. And Cyrus specifically. Hey. I hate to put you on the spot like this, but um, I'm going to give you a little trail. So I've been following you on social media for quite some time, and um, I recently, well not too recently, I've been a lover of music forever, but secretly. Um, and it wasn't until I moved in with Cousin Lisa and Cousin Prof, and you sure, know, no. me, Leli, and Kumba were singing together where I was like, you know, I actually really want to do this, but then I just never said it out loud. And, you know, academics is where I thrive. However, I watch all of your lives because they are extremely inspiring. And when you are playing like all of your music, I listen to every song like a creep, but only because, <laughs> but only because, um, you wrote a song for my friend Fidel Hamoud, and he played it for me, and I absolutely loved it. And this is right around the time that I started songwriting again privately. And because I couldn't tell him, oh, I want to work with Cyrus, because even though we've been friends for years, he doesn't even know that I sing, um, I was like, okay, I need to work with this guy. And so I did, DM, I commented and DM'd you, and I was like, I have an idea. I need you. 
I need you to help me out with this particular song. Wow. And you didn't respond. But there's more, wait, there's more. Yes, network. So then, I mean, since he's here, might as well. So then, um, you know, I'll let you go, or whatever. And then um, right around graduation, what, last May, May 2018, you know, I had that good graduation money, thanks, fam. And I was like, you know what, I want to take a trip somewhere, and I do want to go to Atlanta, but I am not going to go unless I get this DM back, because I know that when I go down to Atlanta, I know I want to work. And so um, I DM'd you again. I did not get a response again. But then, just about a month ago, I put out this cover to a Liberian cover, um, to this song, Bad Like That, by this Liberian artist, Kizzy W. And you liked it. Ooh. And you followed me back. So I figure, I figured that this was all coming to fruition and you are here because you Come need on. to hear this song. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So we're probably going to be working here. <laughs> Perfect example of how to work alone. So you can't leave New Jersey without that. We're working. So right. no more. Cool. Wow. Thank you, everyone. Give yourselves a round of applause. Cyrus, you're in for a lot of work, so get ready. <laughs> well, it was such an honor having you both on the show. You know, I know that God has great plans for both of y'all, and I cannot yes. wait to hear all your new music, and yes. everybody's looking forward to it, yes. um, especially a performance tomorrow. You guys ready? Yes. Woo! Yes. So for those of you who are watching and those of you who are here, make sure you check out Notes of Hope and follow us on Instagram at TV Unsung Heroes to check out this lovely interview and to share it, and please tag us in all your photos and videos. We'd love for you guys to just be a part of this whole beautiful network and beautiful family. Um, thank you guys again for being on Unsung Heroes. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time, this is Christy Morales with Unsung Heroes.